decided to look back and look at myself 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and see what was missing, what I didn't know. And I found this very basic, really basic, but very important thing that I didn't know 15 years ago when I started to sell. And if I would know about it, and if I would uh, pay attention to it, I think I would be much more successful in my career much earlier. So in industrial sales, we need to make um, complex technical and financial presentations and convince decision makers that our solutions are, are best for them. But we cannot do it without getting full trust of the buyer, right? So really I want to talk about trust. It's very simple, but it's not as easy. You know, it's, uh, it's common sense. Everybody thinks, oh, it's trust. Let's just build trust. But how it works, that's what I want to discuss because often buyers, they just don't like salespeople. They think salespeople are pushing or uh, there's a bad image historically, you know, about salespeople. And I know that in the past, it prevented me from visiting the customer and showing features and benefits of the machine I wanted to sell them, right? It happened, it happened before. And what I got out of it, that um, distrust of the customer is not really their problem. It's my problem. Because without complete trust, I cannot sell machine, I cannot make living. That was one of the very important points that I got out of my experience. And another one that I got that each time I get a decision, trust or distrust, I get a decision either way. The customer tells me, oh, I need to think about it. That's a decision. The customer tells me, uh, I need to discuss with the owner. I need to shop around and get alternative code. I need to, I'm going to order from uh, your competitor. That's definitely a decision. It's not the one that I like, but that's a decision. And we are responsible for all those decisions. It's very important to understand because salesperson always, always gets a decision. I didn't know about that back then. And now I know because salesperson, and if the decision is not favorable to us, it's because of us. It's not because, uh, it's not because of, of the buyer. Um, salesperson, customer, customer doesn't stop the sale. It's usually salesperson who fell short to stop the sale because the sale doesn't happen in the vacuum. The sale, needs to, the salesperson needs to make sales happen, right? It's salesperson's job to sell the product and to create trust. And what, what happens, and I was guilty of that many times, salesperson shifts blame, puts blame on the customer. I did it many times. Oh, he's out of his mind. He doesn't know what he wants. He wants more that he can afford. He is cheap, and I hate it now because, look, if we didn't make a sale, it's our fault, period. Because if we shift the blame to the customer, it means we take low responsibility. And low responsibility in sales and in business always means very low levels of production, always. So what I really want to take away of the short speech is just uh, trust is critical. It's really, it's everything. If we don't make the sell, something is distrusted. We need to look into it because that's the problem. And third, and probably the most important thing that we always, we sell people, we always get a decision. We just need to find how to build the trust. That's it. 
Well, um, Anton, I, I do agree it's really important to to build the trust, but to create this trust, it's pretty cons- um, time consuming because it consists normally of several factors. First, like you need to find a real decision maker in the company. And sometimes it's the wrong person you think it should be. You need to find really that uh, right person. You need to build uh, relations with that person. And also the third one very important step is to show that you are very like a professional person and you can show the value of your product. So when you um, when you combine the three, right person, decision maker, mm-hmm. friendly relations, uh, when this person starts to trust you on this, you know, like personal level and uh, this technical professionalism that you can expose, these three factors really work, but it takes time. Yes, but, you know, Look, it all starts, we need to make commitment. You know, it all starts Absolutely. with commitment. Take time or doesn't take time, doesn't matter. It's a commitment to build trust. That we cannot sell without it, right? We need to build trust. And we also need to take responsibility. That's what another important thing to mention. For selling and for buying. Because usually, at least, what I did before, I took responsibility for the selling. I give you an example. Eight years ago, I traveled to Russia to visit one of our customers. And after customer visit and dinner, he told me, I'm not going to buy this machine. And I remember that. I looked at him and I said, listen, if you're not going to buy this machine, it's not your fault. It's my fault. And he looked at me and he said, you know, something you said, there's something in it. And after that, I supplied three different machines over years to him. But the thing is, I took responsibility for selling, for buying, for managing transactions, for financing, whatever I can. Because the, the important thing is to build trust is not just look at the selling job, but to get the job done. That's the point. We need to look at the complete thing to get the job done. I agree with... Uh with everything that both of you have said, I think that a couple of things that stood out for me is, uh, is the idea, of course, of course, trust is critical. So, so I think focusing on how to build the trust, what elements are critical to build the trust are really, really, that is, that is a really key point. Because yeah. my, to, your, to your point, exactly, you have to find the decision maker, but how do, once you do so, how do you build how do you build that trust and the friendly relations or the business relations you're right they are completely aligned but they're aligned on one critical element the customer or the person that you are selling they must believe that you're genuine right you have to be you have to be genuine and by being genuine that you have to be a good listener you have to listen to the customer to understand what their motivations are. You have your motivations as a salesperson to sell your machine or your material or your something. But in the end, in order to be successful, you have to actually listen to the customer and make sure you are providing them a solution that actually affects them in a positive way. It gives them the impact, real or perceived. But that's like Anton, to your point as well, there's a famous line in a film which says on every sales call, a sale is made. Either you are selling the customer or they are selling you the reasons they can't buy from you. But on any call, a sale is made. Which so, one is that? Wall, 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 Wall Street? Where, it's, actually, uh, it's actually Boiler Room. Boiler Room, right, right, right. Yes. So, I mean, but to, to that extent, it reminded me of what you were saying before. <laughs> it's extremely true. So I think that to build the trust, you have to show the customer that you're not just self-interested in making sales and making money off of them, but you are motivated to give them something that has value for them. And that requires being a good listener. I think that's how you build trust. That's for, Yes. For- and probably one of the unspoken points of what I, I was trying to say that we start, we need to stop using 
not making a sell, finding different excuses. There are hundreds of excuses that probably are valid, but look, if the customer would have complete confidence in our company, in the salesperson, in the product, in terms, they would just make a deal. So if, if we didn't close the deal, that means some, you know, there was a distrust and we need to look at there's some levels of distrust that we overlook. And even the, I can tell you more because I found it also a hard way. Even when I managed to close the deal, some elements of the distrust, if they existed before, they handed me later, they caused problems even after I closed the deal, after shipment, after startup. So that's very important to handle those trust and distrust issue and understand them because I didn't know, I tell you the truth, I didn't think about it before. I didn't know, I didn't pay attention to it. So just pay, paying attention because I think that's what differentiates amateur salesperson and professional sales, salesperson because professional per, salesperson understands those issues. You know, everybody will feel we cannot close 100% of sales and Many times the, the problem will be in distrust, but as soon as we understand and don't use different excuses to cover up for our own faults, we will go much farther ahead. I agree. I agree. You know, you said before, if, um, just now that uh, if, if, if the customer already knew they were going to buy, the, the product was perfect and all of these things, in fact, we, as a business owner, we wouldn't really even need salespeople. We could we just- would, We wouldn't need absolutely. Right, we absolutely would have AI true. or some algorithmic program and customer could click their box. Absolutely with, true. And we would get the revenue and uh, everyone would be fine. So so the, the notion of a salesperson then using the excuse, oh, the customer thought it was too expensive or they didn't know. This, this is the job. The job is to make the relationship and to, to build the trust and to show the customer why these products and services that we're offering have value for them. And also in regards uh, to what you mentioned, Scott, earlier in terms of reasons to buy for customer, I would also mention that sometimes there are like uh, several decision makers and we should consider that when we meet someone's uh, reasons to buy, like uh, we are competitive uh, or our machines are faster, there is always like another person who can also influence um, on this decision, like technical guys, for example, and uh, until they re- Realize they can like save on lead or something like that. They uh, won't be able to buy. So our uh, commitment is to like to find all those uh, pieces of the puzzle and to convince all of them uh, to satisfy all these reasons and requirements from their side. And yep. only then we will be able to. to close Masha, that's it. why that's why I mentioned that being a good listener was the number one component because in order to uh, to really understand um, what motivates each stakeholder, you really need to understand um, what they are thinking in their minds. A technical person doesn't want to hear about lower cost. Um, a person on the production line doesn't care about the R and D side. They care about productivity. So you, you need to match up and make sure that you are addressing the specific issues that really do matter to the person you're speaking with. So to your point, it's true. You need to have an all-encompassing approach that you approach each person that has a role in making a decision, but you need to be targeted and make sure that in with each of those people, you are addressing the key issues that matter to them. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, take care okay, of yourself, guys. Anton. Yeah, All right, take bye. Care. Have a nice bye. day. Bye bye.